Little Dom Matilda, the ghost. There was comparative calm in the Wormwood household for about a week after the superglue episode. The experience had clearly chastened Mr. Wormwood and he seemed temporary to have lost his taste for boasting and bullying. Then suddenly he struck again. Perhaps he had had a bad day at the garage and had not sold enough crummy second-hand cars. There are many things that make a man ir irritable. When he arrives home from work in the evening and a sensible wife will usually notice the storm signals and will leave him alone until he simmers down. When Mr. Wormwood arrived back from the garage that evening, his face was as dark as a thundercloud, and somebody was clearly for the high jump pretty soon. His wife recognized the sign immediately and made herself sacrifice. Scarface. He then strode into the living room. Matilda happened to be curled up in an armchair in the corner totally absorbed in a book. Mr. Warman switched on the television. The screen lit up. The program blurred. Mr. Warman glared at Matilda. She hadn't moved. She had somehow trained herself by now to block her ears to the ghastly sound of the drended box. She kept right on reading, and for some reason, this infuriated the father. Perhaps his anger was intensified because he saw her getting pleasure from something that was beyond his reach. Don't you ever stop reading? He snapped at her. Oh, hello, daddy. Daddy, she said pleasantly. Did you have a good day? What is this trash? He said, snatching the book from her hands. It isn't trash, Daddy. It's lovely. It's called The Red Pony. It's by John Stenbeck, an American writer. Why don't you try it? You'll love it. Filth, Mr. Wormwood said. If it's by an American, it's certainly to be filth. That's all they write about. No, Daddy, it's beautiful. Honestly, it is. It's about, I don't want to know what it's about. Mr. Wormwood barked. I'm fed up with your reading. Anyways, go f and find yourself something useful to do. With friendly sunless, he sun suddenness, he now begins ripping the pages out of the book in handfuls and throwing them in the waste paper basket. Matilda froze in horror. The father kept going. There seemed no doubt that the man felt some kind of jealousy. How dare she? He seemed to be saying with each grip of a page. How dare she enjoy reading books when he couldn't? How dare she? That's a library book, Matilda cried. It doesn't belong to me. I have to return it to Mrs. Phillips. Then you'll have to buy another one, won't you? The father said still tearing out the page. You'll have to save your pocket money until there's enough in the kitty to buy a new one from your precious Mrs. Philip, won't you? With that, he dropped the now empty covers of the book into the basket and marched out of the room, leaving the telly barring. Most children in Matilda's place would have burst into floods of tears. She didn't do this. She sat there very still and white and thoughtful. She seemed to know that neither crying nor sulking ever got anyone anywhere. The only sensible thing to do when you are attacked is, as Napoleon once said, to counterattack Matilda wonderfully subtitled mind was already at work devising yet another suitable punishment for the poisonous parents. The plan that was now beginning to hatch in her mind depended, however, upon whether or not Fred's parents was really good as a talker as Fred made out. Fred was a friend of Matilda's. 
He was a small boy of six who lived just around the corner of, from her. And for days, he had been going up on about his, this great talking parrot his father had given him. So the following afternoon, as soon as Mrs. Wormwood had departed in her car for another session of bingo, Matilda set out for Fred's house to investigate. She knocked on his door and asked if he would be kind enough to show her the famous bird. Fred was delightful and led her up to his bedroom, where a um, truly magnificent blue and yellow parrot sat in the tall cage. There he, there it is, Fred said. Its name is Chopper. Make it talk, Matilda said. You can make, you can't make it talk, Fred said. You have to be patient. I will talk when it feels like it. They hung around waiting. Suddenly the parent said, hello, hello, hello. It was exactly like a human voice, Matilda said. That's amazing. What else can it say? Round on my bones. The parrot said, giving a wonderful intimidation of a spooky voice, rattle my bones. He always says, saying that, Fred told her. What else can, could he, can he say? Matilda said. That's about it, Fred said. But it is pretty marvelous, don't you think? It's fabulous, Matilda said. Will you lend it to me just for one night? No, Fred said. Certainly not. I'll give you all my next week pocket money, Matilda said. That was different. Fred thought about it for a few seconds. All right, then, he said, if you promise to return him tomorrow. So Matilda staggered back to her own empty house, carrying the tall cage in both hands. There was a fireplace in the dining room, and she now set about wedging the cage up the chimney and out of sight. This wasn't easy, but she managed it in the end. Hello, 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 the bird called down to her. Hello, hello. Shut up, you nuts, Matilda said. And she went out to wash the soot off her hands. That evening, while the mother and the father, the brother and Matilda were having supper as usual in the living room in front of her, the television a small voice came loud and clear from the dining room across the, the hall. Hello, 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 it says. Harry, cried the, the mother, turning white. There's somebody in the house. I heard a voice. So did I, the brother said. Matilda jumped up and switched off the television. Shh, she said, listen. They all stopped eating and sat there very intent. Listening, hello, 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 came the voice again. There it is, cried the brother. It's burglars, hissed the mother. They're in the dining room. I think they are, the father said, sitting tight. Then go and catch them, Harry, hissed the mother. Go out and color them red-handed. The father didn't move. He seemed in no hurry to dash off and be a hero. His face had turned gray. Get on with it, hissed the mother. They are probably after the silver. The husband whipped his lips nervously with his napkin. Why don't we all go and look together, he said. Come on, then, the brother said. Come on, Mom. They're definitely in the dining room, Matilda whispered. I'm sure they are. The mother grabbed a poker from the fireplace. The father took a golf club that was standing in the corner. The brother sees a table lamp ripping the plug out of the, its socket. Matilda took the knife she had been eating with, and all four of them crept towards the dining room door. The father kept well behind the others. Hello, 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 came the voice again. Come on, Matilda, cried and she burst into the room. Brandishing her knife, stick him up, she cried. We caught you. The others followed her, waving their weapons. Then they stopped. They stared around the room. There was no one there. There's no one here, the father said, greatly relieved. I heard him, Harry, the father shrieked, still clapping. I distantly heard his voice. So did you. 
I'm certain I heard him, Matilda said, cried. He's in some in here somewhere else. She began searching behind the sofa and behind the curtains. Then came the voice once again, soft and spooky this time. Rattle my bones, it said. Rattle my bones. Bones. They all jumped, including Matilda, who was a pretty good actress. They stared around the room. There was still no one there. It's a ghost, Matilda said. Heaven help us, cried the mother, clutching her husband round the neck. I know it's a ghost, Matilda said. I've heard it here before. The room is haunted. I thought you knew that. Save us, the mother cried, screamed, almost throttling her husband. I'm getting out of here, the father said, greater than than ever now. They all fled, stamp, slamming the door behind them. The next afternoon, Matilda managed to get rather sooty and grumpy pears down from the chimney and out of the house without being seen. She carried it through the back door and ran with it all the way to Fred's house. Did it behave itself? Fred asked her. We had a lovely time with it, Matilda said. My parents adored it.